Hello, welcome to Grammar and Writing Lesson 25. So today we're talking about nouns and indirect objects. We talked about them as complements, how they complete can complete a sentence. You have your subject, your verb, and then you have your complement. We talked about how they can be a predicate nominative, how they can be a direct object. So now let's talk about them as indirect objects. So what is an indirect object? Well, an indirect object is a noun or pronoun. We're going to mostly focus on nouns right now because we're in our noun chapter, but it can also be a pronoun that precedes. Precedes means comes in front of the direct object and tells to whom or for whom or to what or for what the action of the verb is done. For example, Lisa took Mary the gift. Lisa took what? Lisa took gift. So gift is what she took. She didn't take Mary anywhere. She took the gift. Gift is your direct object. Lisa took to whom the gift? Lisa took to Mary the gift. So Mary is the indirect object. Or you could ask it as Lisa took the gift to whom? That's, that's what I would ask. I wouldn't say to whom the gift. Lisa took the gift to whom? So the indirect object has to come in front of the direct object. If you have an indirect object, it's going to be in front of your direct object. Let's look at this example. Lisa brought Mary's gift. Lisa brought what? Lisa brought gift. Okay, so gift is the direct object. Lisa brought the gift for whom? Well, there's no answer to that question in this sentence. Mary's is not an indirect object. Possessive nouns can never be used as indirect objects or as direct objects because possessive nouns stop being nouns and become adjectives. Because you can't say, Lisa brought the gift for Mary's. No, she brought it for Mary. But in your sentence, your word is Mary's. So it cannot be your indirect object. It's a possessive noun. It becomes an adjective describing gift. Whose gift? It's Mary's gift. An indirect object is never in a prepositional phrase. So an indirect object is never a possessive noun. It's also never in a prepositional phrase. Will bought his dad a tie. So <clears throat> what's your verb? Bought. Your subject, Will. Will bought what? Will bought a tie. He didn't buy his dad. He bought a tie. So make sure that you're thinking carefully when you ask yourself these questions. Don't just go to the first noun. Will bought, oh, dad's a noun, Will bought dad. No, that doesn't make any sense. Will did not go and buy his dad. He bought a tie. Will bought a tie for whom? For his dad. So dad's your indirect object, tie is your direct object. Notice that the indirect object always comes between the action verb and the direct object. So your indirect object is in front of your direct object. Let's look at this sentence. Will bought a tie for his dad. So here we see Will bought what? He bought a tie. But then you have your prepositional phrase for his dad. Dad is not an indirect object in this sentence. First of all, it comes after the direct object. So that's our number one clue. But number two, it's inside that prepositional phrase. Dad is in a prepositional phrase and is the object of the preposition for. So it already has a job being the object of the preposition for. So anytime you see that prepositional phrase, you can automatically block it out in your mind. You know it's not going to have any other job in that sentence aside from being the object of the preposition. Indirect objects may be compound. So we know what they can't be. They can't be possessive nouns and they can't be objects of preposition but they can be compound, meaning you could have more than one, just like direct objects. The waitress brought Andrew and Ethan their steak. What's your verb? Brought. Who brought? Waitress brought. Waitress brought what? Well, she didn't bring Andrew and Ethan. She brought the steak, so that's your direct object. The waitress brought steak to whom? Well, she brought it to Andrew and Ethan. So always look for the direct object first and then the indirect object. 
If there is no direct object, there can be no indirect object. Okay, did you catch that? If there is no direct object, there can be no indirect object. So there has to be a direct object. If you can't find one, don't even bother looking for an indirect object because you have to have that direct object first. Okay, that's it for your lesson today. So what's your homework? Complete language, see pages 153 and 155. This is what you have for your exercises. <clears throat> On page 153, Pink says, mark and label each sentence. The first one is done for you. Number one, Mark gave Dylan the basketball. So we start by underlining our verb two times, gave. Who gave? Mark gave. So Mark is one time as your subject. Your verb is an action verb. So that means I'm looking for a direct object. I'm not looking for predicate nominative. Remember, predicate nominatives only come with linking verbs. So Mark gave what? Mark gave basketball, not Dylan, he gave basketball. Mark gave basketball to whom? To Dylan, so Dylan is our indirect object. Okay, let's try number two together. I asked Cody a question. What's your verb? Asked, very good. There we go, couldn't find my pointer. I asked, who asked? I asked. Okay, what kind of verb is asked? Action or linking? Action, very good. So that means I'm looking for a direct object. I asked what? I asked question. I asked question to whom? Sorry, that might look like an O. It's supposed to be a D, D O. I asked a question to whom? I asked a question to Cody, so that's my indirect object. Okay, now why is it I, why is it not I asked Cody? Why is Cody not the direct object? Because to ask Cody means that you're saying Cody as a question, but Cody's not a question, it's a person to whom you asked the question. Number three, the teacher gave the class a test. What's your verb? Gave, very good. Who gave or what gave? Teacher gave, very good. So what kind of verb is gave? Action, very good. So that means I'm looking for a direct object and possibly indirect object. Not every direct object will have an indirect object. So the teacher gave what? Think carefully. Test, very good. The teacher didn't give the class, the teacher gave the test. The teacher gave the test to whom or to what? To the class. So class is our indirect object. You'll finish the exercise just like that. Okay, think A on page 155. The instructions are circle the direct objects in the following paragraph. Underline the indirect objects. Not every sentence contains objects. So to find the direct objects and the indirect objects, you first need to find your subject and verb so that you can then ask what and then to what or for what, to whom or for whom. Write B on page 155 says on notebook paper, write four sentences using the proper noun Jonah in the following ways. Subject, direct object, predicate nominative, indirect object. Okay, so in sentence number one, Jonah needs to be your subject. In the second sentence you write, Jonah needs to be your direct object. In the third sentence you write, Jonah needs to be your predicate nominative, which means you need to be using a linking verb. So whatever your subject is, it equals Jonah. And in your fourth sentence, Jonah needs to be your indirect object. So whatever you do, it needs to be to or for Jonah. All right, and then think C on page 155 says identify the bold words as direct objects or indirect objects by putting IO or DO in the blank. So down below, you have your blanks with the numbers next to it. So you need to write IO or DO in the blank. For example, Mr. Barnes told his grandson a yarn about Paul Bunyan. By the way, a yarn is a, a story that's um, a fictional story, basically. 
So look at number one. What would that be? Is it an indirect object or a direct object? So you need to analyze the sentence. Find your subject and verb. Ask what. Whatever answers that question will be your direct object. Then to what or for whom? That's your indirect object. Okay? If you have any questions, please let me know. I will be happy to help you. Have a great day, guys. Love you very much, and I'll see you in our next lesson. Bye.